Okay, so I'm guessing most people here have probably been to a conference at some point in their lives. Uh, some of you may even have organized conferences or large events, and if you've ever been to a conference or organized a conference, you probably wonder if there's just a better way of doing it all, and you're not alone. Uh, about 30 years ago, a chap called Harrison Owen had to organize a conference, and he did it the traditional way with, you know, keynote speakers and plenaries and breakouts and, you know, nine months' worth of stress. And it was a great success. Everyone loved it. He got the feedback in. Everyone went wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. The best thing about it, everyone said, was the coffee breaks, which, of course, was the part of the conference that he had no control over at all. So the following year, he had to do another conference, and he thought, well, how do I harness the power of these coffee breaks? How do I base a conference around those interactions? And what he did was he came up with a sort of a system of running events which essentially made them self-organizing. It involved a fraction of the cost, a fraction of the organization, meant you know, needed no agenda in advance, and everybody who turned up was involved and engaged in the actual conference or event themselves. And he called this open space. He actually called it open space technology for the purpose of a paper, because he thought that sounded more impressive. Um, open space events are run according to five principles and one law. The five principles are quite zen. They are whoever comes is the right people, whenever it starts is the right time, wherever it happens is the right place, whatever happens is the only thing that could happen, and when it's over, it's over. I say zen, you can also think of it as the, the Doris Day approach to event management. Uh, the one law is the law of mobility, or the law of two feet, and that states that if at any time during our time together, you find yourself in any situation where you are neither receiving nor giving, then use your two feet and take yourself somewhere else. And essentially what that means is that it's your responsibility to make the most of your time during the conference or the event. You know, if, if you're bored, go somewhere else, go to a different session. There's no need to have, you know, Mr. Grumpy. It's, it's up to you to make the most of it. And if people aren't talking about what you want to talk about, then you can call a session to talk about that thing yourself. And open space events work best when you've got a complicated subject to discuss when you've got sort of high level of potential of conflict, when you've got lots of people with lots of diverse opinions and approaches. In fact, the more complex, the more diverse, the more likely it is that there's gonna be conflict, the better the open space is uh, as an approach. But no matter how complex, all open space events start with one big room and one big circle. All the participants sit in a circle and they're then invited to call sessions uh, which build up the agenda. And what they do is, you see, along the top, you've got what are locations, and down the side, you have times. People come, they say, I want to talk about this, I'm going to talk about it in this location, in this time. And that's how the agenda was created. That's the agenda for um, the start of a two-and-a-half-day conference that we ran at LIFA last year. Once the agenda's been created, people go off to the sessions they want to go to. Following the principles and the law, you know, they take part in what they want to take part in, they don't take part in what they don't want to take part in. You know, if there's nothing that interests them, they go and have a coffee or go outside for a cigarette or, you know, just sit in the corner. Um, the only stipulation, if you call a session, you have to make notes, you have to write those notes up, and you have to put those notes on the news wall so that if people haven't been able to make it to your session, they can still find out what went on. And this works really well. As I mentioned, we ran a conference like this at LIPA last year on musical theatre in higher education. Lots of jazz hands. Um, it was quite a small conference, but over the course of two and a half days, we had something like 20 sessions and generated about 60 or 70 pages worth of notes, which people took away with them at the end of the conference. So there's no need to wait three months for the, the proceedings to be published. It's used a lot on theatre, but it's also used in the corporate world. The, a chap I know in Reading who runs these uh, open space events for multinational blue chip organisations to help improve quality and processes within those organisations. And the example that Harrison Owen gives in his book is of 250 architects, lawyers, engineers, Native Americans, and politicians who had to find a way to build a road across the stretch of Native American land in America. And they did it using open space. But you can use it you know, within your own businesses and organizations. You can use it for research, for branding, or just for incremental changes. Rather than having a list of questions that you want to go and ask individuals, get those individuals together, get them talking to each other, and find out what it is that they want to tell you. And the best thing about open space, like open source, is that it's free to use. Harrison Owen says he didn't invent it, he discovered it. So there's no um, accreditation and no licensing. So if you wanted to run an open space event tomorrow, you could go and do that. Um, if you want to wait a little while and find out a bit more about open space before, 
I'm getting some people together to try and really work out how we can use open space in Liverpool. So here are the details. If you're interested, either follow or get in touch. Thank you.